Wow, ladies and gentlemen, do you want to watch Dr. Shannon Curry being grilled by Elaine Bredehoft? Oh, no, or Elaine Bredehoft being grilled by Dr. Shannon Curry. Elaine Bredehoft tries to say that Johnny Depp's expert psychologist witness is biased because she had a meeting. <laughs> Dr. Curry, I just want to make sure that uh, we all remember you're not board certified, correct? No, I'm not. Okay. And you've been licensed for how long? I've been licensed for 10 years. Okay. And you are being paid by Mr. Depp's legal team to be here, correct? Yes. How much have you charged so far? I actually don't know. Over 100000 I truly don't know. I don't do my own books. Over 200000 I don't know. Over 300000 That would be way too much, but I do not know. Okay. Um, now, just so that we all remember, you had dinner at Mr. Depp's house for three to four hours with Mr. Depp, Mr. Waldman, Mr. Chu, and Ms. Vasquez, correct? I was interviewed. I asked if there was anything I could eat because at about three hours I started to get hungry. Mr. Depp then offered to order takeout for the entire team. So you had dinner with, at Mr. Depp's home with Mr. Waldman, Mr. Chu, Ms. Vasquez, and Mr. Depp, correct? Yes. And you had drinks as well, correct? I actually don't know. I do remember that there were drinks. Do you recall testifying earlier that you did have a drink of mule something? No, I remember testifying that there might have been a mule, a okay. Moscow mule. Okay, thank you. We, did, we didn't have animals there as well, right? No animals. Okay, that's good to know. Mm -hmm. and, and you talked about transparency. I just want to make sure you had several uh, designations, expert designations and reports in this case, correct? Yes. And in not one of them did you disclose that you had dinner and drinks at Mr. Depp's house for three to four hours with Mr. Waldman, Mr. Chu, and Ms. Vasquez. Is that correct? Ms. Bredehoff, you're mischaracterizing what occurred. I, Dr. Curry, please answer the question. Not once did you disclose this in any of your reports, I did not correct? disclose that I was interviewed as that standard procedure. But it's true that you have never gone to a client's house to be interviewed for an expert witness position, correct? Yes, because I never had a client that was essentially homebound because of their celebrity status. All right. And, and you talked to Mr. Depp for three to four hours uh, before taking on the role of assessing Ms. Hurd and deciding whether she was suffering from any distress, correct? I did not talk to Mr. Depp. I was talking to his legal team and he was there to observe. He was present for the three to four yes. hours. Oh, and are you saying now he just stayed silent and said nothing all, all day? I don't recall what he didn't or didn't do. I was answering questions. Okay. Now, your expertise here is limited to whether Amber Heard suffers from PTSD currently. Is that correct? Yes. I was okay. tasked with conducting an evaluation okay. to determine Ms. Heard's mental you know, status. We're on very, very strict time limitations okay. because we promised to get this case to the jury. So mm -hmm. I'd really appreciate it if you just answer my question rather than trying to go for it. Sure. Okay? Thank you very much. Now, after you did, had the dinner, you then provided a designation in February of 2021 in which you said, and this is long before you ever saw Amber Heard, correct? You said that Amber Heard, quote, exhibits patterns of behavior that are consistent with co-occurring cluster B personality disorder traits, especially borderline personality disorder, end of quote, correct? No. No, you, we went through this before. We did. But, and, and that was on the designation, was it not? I, I told you last time that I did not write that. Okay. And you don't know who did on the legal team, correct? No. Okay. And then I also asked you, if you may recall, whether you listened to the audio recording in which Mr. Depp taunted Amber Heard that she had a borderline personality disorder. Do you recall that? I recall you asking me that, yes. Did you recall listening to that audio tape? I don't recall Mr. Depp taunting Ms. Heard. I do recall 
that he at some point suggested she might have that diagnosis. Okay, and that was back in these audio tapes back when they were together, correct? Yes. Okay, now you've never before been asked to testify or serve as an expert with respect to someone who has bipolar disorder, correct? No, as I previously stated, that's not true. All right. Not up here anymore. Okay, then my apologies, but I'm going to go ahead. Your Honor, can we approach it? All right. Now, you recall testifying in your deposition on March 21, 2022, correct? Yes. And you were under oath at that time, correct? Yes. And the question I just showed you on page 207, line 5, have you ever been asked to testify or serve as an expert with respect to whether someone has bipolar disorder? And your answer at that time was no, correct? Yes, I had forgotten that case. Okay. And have you ever been asked to testify whether anyone has behavioral or characterological conduct that suggests they may be an IPV perpetrator? I can't, yeah, I may have. It's difficult after about 250 cases, it's difficult to remember specifically. All right, and have you ever been qualified as an expert in the area of IPV? No. And have you ever been qualified to testify as an expert in domestic abuse or violence? Violent, oh, domestic. Abuse uh, or violence. Yes, that's been a component of testimony. May I approach the Line 16 of page 207, have you ever been qualified as an expert in the area of IPV? Your answer on line 20 was no, under oath, correct? Then the next question, have you ever been qualified to testify as an expert in domestic abuse or violence? That and goes into page 208, line 4. The answer then under oath was no. Now, you would agree that the literature is quite clear that trauma-based sy symptoms such as PTSD or complex PTSD have symptoms that overlap with per borderline personality disorder and histrionic personality disorder, yes? Yes. Okay, and you would agree that it's important to use valid and reliable measures for an accurate diagnosis, correct? Absolutely. Okay, you chose, however, not to administer the Structured Clinical Interview for DSM-5 Personality Disorders, the SCID, is that correct? I did. Okay. And would you agree that that is a state-of-the-art structured clinical interview? Not for a forensic evaluation with a sophisticated examinee. But to determine if a personality disorder is present? You no, not that. in this setting. You don't agree with that? I do not. And you don't agree that that is the gold standard assessment for reliable, accurate psychiatric diagnosis? It's a good one, but for treatment settings especially. Okay. Now, did Ms. Hurd, you said you talked about, you read all of the treatment records, right? Yes. Okay. Do you recall reading the treatment records for the psychologist Bonnie Jacobs? who saw Amber Heard over five years. I do. And did you see anything in Bonnie Jacobs' notes over five years in which she diagnosed Ms. Heard with borderline personality or histrionic personality disorder? No. Now, you also saw the notes of Dr. Con Con Connell Cohen, correct? Mm -hmm. And you even attended his deposition, correct? Yes. All right, and he saw Amber for roughly two years. He was part of the Dr. Kipper connection, mm -hmm. right? Yes. Correct. Okay. And did you see anything in Dr. Collins' notes 
Um, and did he say in his deposition that he diagnosed Amber Heard with borderline personality disorder or histrionic personality disorder? I saw the symptoms clearly delineated throughout his notes and in his deposition. He does not use diagnoses, so he would not have diagnosed her. He said specifically in his deposition he did not diagnose her with that, correct? Yes, and he also specifically stated that he does not use diagnoses. All right. And you also have seen Dr. Banks, Dr. Amy Banks, the psychiatrist, mm -hmm. her deposition, correct? Yes. And did, did Dr. Not Anderson? her deposition. I reviewed her notes in the transcript. All right. Did Dr. Anderson diagnose Ms. Heard with pers borderline personality disorder or is it histrionic personality disorder? I don't believe she pro provided any diagnosis since she was a couples therapist. All right. Now, you've said quite a bit about Don Hughes, but do you remember how many years of experience Don Hughes has in IPV and domestic abuse and violence? I know it's quite a bit. Extensive, and she is board certified, correct? Yes, she is. All right, and she spent 29 hours of examination with Amber Heard, she, did she not? Yes, mostly okay. interviewing. All right, and she, admitted, and she interviewed her therapists, Bonnie Jacobs and Connie Cowell, correct? Yes. And she also interviewed Amber's late mother? Yes. Okay, and she administered 12 different tests over the period of that time, correct? Well, as I said, the majority of those were checklists, which are inappropriate for the forensic setting. I understand that's what mm -hmm. you say, but she administered 12 different tests, correct? If you want to qualify them as tests, sure. Okay. And so you did you disregard what it... No, I'm not even going to say that. Okay. Let's go to the CAPS-5 and PTSD. Now, you assessed Ms. Hurd's traumas in her life, correct? Uh... Yes, I did uh, okay. give her an instrument to assess for any trauma exposure throughout the entire lifespan. Yes, yes, it's fine. And you wrote that Ms. Hurd's exposure to a traumatic event, namely one of the sexual assaults by Mr. Depp, more than satisfied this requirement. Did you not write that in your notes? That is not what I wrote in my notes. Do you have my notes? So we and can you look administered at that? a structured clinical interview based on that trauma, correct? Not exactly. It's not quite right. Now, Dr. Hughes administered a full intimate partner violence assessment, correct? That's not a psychological assessment. We can't assess for intimate partner violence. That's an event. Dr. Hughes administered a full intimate partner violence assessment, correct? She stated that, and that's actually something I'm rebutting today. Okay, and, and you reviewed her psychological testing, correct? I sure did, yes. Okay, and are you aware that in September 2019, Ms. Hurd had a trauma-based symptom on many of those valid tests? Um, can you be a little bit more specific? Many of those do valid you, tests, which tests are you talking about? Do you have a recollection of that, September 2019? She administered all of her testing in September 2019, so I'm not sure which one, oh, except for the CAPS-5, which was 10 days after mine in 2021. Now, Dr. Hughes clinically evaluated those symptoms and established that Ms. Hurd does have PTSD from the totality of the intimate partner violence by Mr. Depp, correct? That's what she stated, yes. Okay. Now, Dr. Anderson's clinical notes that said Amber had come to... Objection, hearsay. I haven't even asked the question yet, Your Honor. Are you going to read her notes? Well, let me, no, no, actually, I, I wasn't going to read her no, notes. Okay. I was going to ask a particular question. Okay. You talked about danger. Do you recall that in your testimony? Yes. All right. Now, if, if a, a patient comes to you as a couple's therapist mm -hmm. with two black eyes, would you assess there, that there may be a potential danger there? Sure. Okay. Did you read Dr. Anderson's notes? I believe I did. Now, you administered the Minnesota Multiphasic Personality Inventory 2, the MMPI 2. Do you recall that? Yes. And you used that to determine whether Amber had PTSD, right? It, not by itself, but it was a part of the data. Okay. And in the 60 to 70 T-score range for that test, which, quote, deliberate attempts to mislead are uncommon, common, end quote. Isn't that correct? Sorry, could you repeat that? In the T-score... Mm -hmm. section mm -hmm. of that, for which assesses deliberate attempts to mislead. Do you recall? She scored 
a 60 on that test, correct? So there are multiple T scores for each scale, so I'm not sure which scale you're talking about. Okay. Well, we can deal with that later. So okay. you would agree that you need to follow ethics and best practices in forensic psychology, correct? Yes. Okay. And the two primary sources are the American Psychological Association Ethical Principles and Professional Code of Conduct, right? Mm -hmm. And the American Psychological Association's Specialty Guidelines for Forensic Psychology, correct? Yes. And Specialty Guidelines 1.02 states that forensic practitioners quote, strive for accuracy, impartiality, fairness, and independence, correct? Yes. Okay. And Specialty Guidelines 1.03 states that you have to avoid a conflict of interest, correct? Yes. Now, in addition to not listing the four hours you spent with Mr. Depp, Mr. Waldman, Mr. Chu, and Ms. Vasquez, you also did not list that you spent an hour with Dr. Shaw, correct? That's incorrect. You, you say that, you, that the designation I, said that you spent During my hour? deposition, I also clarified this. I didn't spend an hour with Dr. Shaw. There was an introduction with the attorneys present on Zoom. My time on that call was less than 30 minutes. Okay. But you still didn't disclose it, did you, in your reports? No. Okay. Now... You are not, you have not been asked to testify about Ms. Hurd's behavior in the context of her relationship with Mr. Depp. Is that correct? I was asked to testify about somebody's behavioral mental status in general, so that can include behavior involved in a relationship with Mr. Depp, but not specifically. Can, can you pull up day 10 of uh, the trial? testimony at page now, two. Your, my question was, now is it your testimony under oath today that you have not been asked to testify concerning Ms. Hurd's behavior in the context of her relationship with Mr. Depp, including any abuse? And your answer under oath to this jury that day was, that's correct. Yes. Correct? I okay. still agree with that to that question. All right. And you have not made any determinations, including any opinions, that Ms. Hurd abused Mr. Depp or Mr. Depp abused Ms. Hurd, correct? Correct. Okay, and, and in fact, you said that's outside the scope. Yes. Right? Okay. Of psychology. And you cannot testify whether Amber Heard suffered any emotional distress as a result of any of the defamatory comments that she has alleged Mr. Waldman made through Mr. Depp, or Mr. Depp made through Mr. Waldman, correct? Objection, Your Honor. Do you want me to read my response? What's sure. Objection. I'm sorry. What I, oh, hold on, Dr. Sorry, Your Honor. That's okay. Oh, what's the objection? You want to approach? Okay. Now, you have not rendered any opin opinion as to whether Amber Heard exhibits patterns of behavior that would suggest her allegations of abuse against Mr. Depp are false. Would you agree? No. I mean, yes, I would agree with that. Oh, thank you. And you have not... No, that's right. That's all I've got. No further questions. All thank right. You. Redirect. Redirect. 